Delayed periods, painful cramps, severe acne, sudden weight gain, unexpected hyperpigmentation, and excessive facial hair growth. These are just a few of the distressing symptoms that Susan was facing. What's the common culprit behind these issues? PCOS or PCOD? But let me tell you that polycystic ovarian syndrome and polycystic ovarian disorder are not one and the same and cannot be used interchangeably. But what's the difference between the two? And how do they differ? And what happened to Susan? Let's find out in today's video about the difference between PCOS and PCOD and about how to tackle the same. Let me start off with a rather basic question. Every month, how many eggs does a woman's ovaries produce? You all probably answered, one. What else could it possibly be? But that is not the right answer. Let me explain. Think of your ovaries as a vault full of eggs. Unlike men who produce new sperm every day, women are born with all the eggs they'll ever have. When a girl's mother is five months pregnant, the baby girl in her womb has the most eggs she'll ever have, about six to seven million. However, this reserve starts depleting in no time. By the time you're born, this number drops to one to two million. As you hit puberty, you're down to around 500,000 eggs, and during your reproductive years, you start with about 300,000. But think about this. Do women end up having 500,000 to 300,000 periods? If that's the case, women would be able to impregnate all their lives, much like men. Then what happens? Throughout your life, you only actually ovulate about 400 to 500 eggs. So when it's time to ovulate every month, women lose multiple eggs from this vault. The number of eggs you lose depends on how full the vault is. Thus, when you are younger, you end up losing a lot more eggs in each one of your cycles. This in turn makes the vault empty more and more as you age. This is the reason why, despite women having over 300,000 eggs, can still only reproduce for 30 to 40 years of their lives. So to answer the question on how many eggs get released every time you ovulate, the answer is anything but one. Each egg grows inside a follicle, and once puberty starts, your brain sends out follicle-stimulating hormones to help these eggs grow. The ovaries know the average number of eggs that you released every month and only release enough SSH to fertilize one egg. And did you know that you lose eggs even before puberty? Yep, women lose eggs from the minute they are born. Before puberty, eggs die off each month. But after puberty, the follicle-stimulating hormone helps one egg grow each cycle. Despite having multiple eggs, the female body recognizes that it's safest to only carry one kid at a time. So only the amount of follicle-stimulating hormone to fertilize one egg is released by the ovaries. So what is PCOS? Around 10 to 13% of people have PCOS, but 70% of them don't even know it. Now this is the major difference between PCOS and PCOD. In PCOS, the woman is born with more than the usual number of eggs in her vault. As we mentioned earlier, a baby girl is usually born with five to six million eggs in her ovaries, as we mentioned earlier. However, your brain doesn't know you have extra eggs, so it sends out the same amount of, of FSH as it would for a normal egg count. Think of FSH as food for your eggs. More eggs means less food for each one, so none grow properly or regularly. When an egg grows, it produces estrogen. Your ovaries are like hormone factories, mainly producing estrogen. With PCOS, because the FSH is spread too thin, the ovaries struggle to make enough estrogen and testosterone levels go up. This rise in testosterone can cause insulin resistance, weight gain around the abdomen, acne, facial hair, and even male pattern baldness. To manage PCOS, there are medicines that tell the brain to send out more FSH. This is called ovulation induction. How to diagnose PCOS? The top five symptoms of polycystic ovarian syndrome are, one, you have irregular periods, two, you have acne on your face and your upper back, 
3 you have extra facial hair like a beard in a man 4 you may have head hair loss like a temporal areas you know like male pattern of baldness and 5 it may make you more difficult to conceive these are the five top symptoms of PCO. Diagnosing PCOS can be a bit of a puzzle, but doctors usually look for a few key signs. One, ultrasound. The first step often involves an ultrasound. If your ovaries appear to have a lot of small follicles, which look like tiny cysts, it might indicate PCOS. These follicles aren't harmful, but they can signal that your ovaries are not working as they should. 2. Hormone Levels Next, doctors will check your hormone levels, specifically looking for higher levels of androgens or male hormones like testosterone. Even though all women have some testosterone, those with PCOS tend to have more than usual. This can be measured through a blood test. You might not need a blood test to see high androgen levels. Sometimes, the physical symptoms like severe acne or excessive facial hair are enough to raise suspicion. 3. Menstrual Cycle Another critical factor is your menstrual cycle. Irregular or absent periods can be a major red flag. If your periods are less frequent than normal or unpredictable, it could be a sign that something is off with your hormone levels and ovulation process. Doctors typically diagnose PCOS if you have at least two of these three signs, irregular periods, high levels of androgens, and polycystic ovaries on ultrasound. However, diagnosing PCOS is not just about ticking boxes. It's about understanding your symptoms and how they impact your health and well-being. If you think you might have PCOS, it's essential to talk to a healthcare provider who can guide you through the diagnosis process and discuss the best ways to manage your symptoms. Now that we've understood PCOS well enough, Let's understand what PCOD is and how it is different from PCOS. PCOD, a mix of hormonal imbalances and genetics, mostly causes PCOD. In a typical menstrual cycle, your ovaries take turns releasing mature eggs, ready for fertilization each month. But with PCOD, things don't go as smoothly. The ovaries often release immature or partially mature eggs, which can develop into cysts, which are little sacs filled with fluid. This can cause your ovaries to swell and become enlarged. Normally, your ovaries produce a small amount of male hormones, but with PCOD, they go into overdrive, producing too much. This can lead to symptoms like male pattern hair loss, weight gain around your abdomen, irregular periods, and sometimes even infertility. While there's no definitive cure for PCOD, you can manage it effectively with lifestyle changes. Consult your healthcare team, your gynecologist, your endocrinologist, and a dietitian. Regular exercise and a healthy diet low in sugars and carbs, but high in protein and fiber, can make a huge difference. Even losing just 5% of your body weight can significantly help manage your symptoms and ease the treatment process. Depending on the situation, you might be prescribed medication to help balance your hormones. If you're dealing with PCOD-induced acne or hair loss, you might need to see a dermatologist for specific treatments. And when it comes to pregnancy, most women with PCOD can expect a smooth journey after a bit of help with conception. However, some cases might need fertility drugs or other fertility-enhancing treatments to conceive. PCOS and PCOD have a lot in common like weight gain, trouble getting pregnant, acne, and periods that just won't behave. But PCOS adds some extra challenges. One of these is metabolic syndrome, which increases your risk of serious health issues like heart disease, strokes, and diabetes. Another concern is sleep apnea, which affects your breathing while you sleep. This can mean sudden pauses in breathing or an inability to breathe properly leading to a highly disturbed sleep cycle and leaving you feeling exhausted. One of the more serious risks of PCOS is the buildup of the uterine lining. Since ovulation isn't happening regularly, the lining of the uterus builds up each month without being shed. This can increase the risk of endometrial cancer. So, managing PCOS isn't just about dealing with the immediate symptoms. It's also about keeping an eye on these potential health risks and working with your healthcare team to stay as healthy as possible. 
But what are the major differences between the two? Differences. First off, PCOS is usually seen as more serious. While PCOD can often be managed by just making lifestyle changes, sometimes no medical treatment is needed at all. But with PCOS, it's different. It's a disorder of the endocrine system, which means it can have more serious implications. Treating PCOS often involves taking external hormones to help balance things out. In today's day and age, PCOD is way more common among women. About one-third of all women who menstruate globally have PCOD. PCOS, on the other hand, is less common, though it's not exactly rare either. And lastly, infertility is a shared concern with both of these hormonal disorders, albeit with some differences in how they affect fertility. As we discussed earlier, PCOD typically allows for pregnancy with some lifestyle adjustments and minimal medical intervention. Many women with PCOD can conceive after making healthy changes to their diet and exercise routines. It's often a matter of managing hormone levels and ensuring regular ovulation. In contrast, PCOS presents more challenges due to its complex hormonal imbalances. Women with PCOS may struggle more with fertility because of irregular ovulation or a lack of ovulation. In such cases, Medications like clomiphene are commonly used to stimulate ovulation and improve fertility. However, these medications can also increase the chances of multiple pregnancies, which may not be desired by everyone. Beyond the medical aspects, both PCOS and PCOD can carry a social stigma. There's often a lack of open discussion about these common conditions, and they can be seen as taboo topics, especially because they involve menstrual health understanding and education are critical to combating this stigma and misinformation. These are health issues that affect many women worldwide, and discussing them openly can lead to better support and treatment options for those who need it. To all the amazing women out there facing PCOS or PCOD, remember this. You are not alone, and you are stronger than you think. These conditions can be challenging both physically and emotionally but they do not define you. Take heart in knowing that there are ways to manage and improve your health, and that God made you exactly how you were supposed to be, and that he will always listen to you. From lifestyle changes to medical treatments, there are paths forward. Surround yourself with a supportive healthcare team, your gynecologist, endocrinologist, and dietitian, who can guide you with personalized care. Susan was diagnosed with PCOD soon after, but with a proper diet and exercise, she has kept it under control. With the help of supportive communities and loved ones, Susan was able to successfully conquer this scary period. And you can as well. And did you know that turmeric can be bad for you if you have certain health issues? Click on the link above to find out. If you found this video helpful and learned something new, make sure you smash that subscribe button and share it with all your friends. You might just help someone with this video today. You're watching Natural Doc TV.